I did not have a stroke. Just like this. He's like, I'm really lucky that I didn't have a stroke. My family has a real, real history of it with my aunt. Blah, 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 blah. Her words just completely slurred. And the next thing I remember, I started to lean to one side and was just trying to hold myself up. I went over, looked over the situation, and she was pretty um, just still. She didn't hear what we were saying. She wasn't responding. Her friend at that point had already asked me to call 911. We got there at Panera Bread. I did a quick assessment. It just pretty much confirmed to me what was going on. She was having a, a stroke. The most appropriate facility for Julie was UC San Diego Medical Center via ambulance code three with licensed sirens. It's only a seven or eight minute drive. For every minute that goes by, once you're having a stroke, two million brain cells have died. Early identification is what is absolutely critical to making sure that the patient gets the care in the most timely fashion. 8-1, I got one ahead of you. EMS is activated, they call the MICN, and then calls our upfront phone, the stroke code coming to UCSD Hillcrest Emergency. And then here at UCSD, the way we do it is the stroke team is basically in the emergency department when the patient arrives. So now you've got that next component of time, which is from the moment of the initial analysis to the imaging. Hi, do you know where you are right now? The physician immediately assesses the patient. The next thing we want to do is to make sure they're stable and that they're ready to be brought back to the CAT scan. Okay, we're starting the scan. The initial CT scan is going to tell us what's going on at that moment, and it is the initial snapshot of what we're doing. When Julie arrived in the emergency room and we gave her TPA, she had a pretty severe stroke. Her stroke scale was 18 when we first evaluated her. After the TPA, she got a little bit better, but certainly not significantly better. At that point, we looked at her neuroimaging and knew that she had a blood clot sitting in that blood vessel. And since she didn't improve, we discussed the possibility of offering her some salvage or rescue therapy with embolectomy. In Julie's case, we were dealing essentially with a complete blockage of the carotid artery in the neck and also a blockage of one of the arteries in the brain. And unlike situations where we use blood thinning medicine alone to treat that problem, mechanical thrombectomy or the use of devices in order to open those arteries is something that was, was central to the success we had in her case. This is the final image after we've actually successfully rebuilt her artery and we actually used a device called a solitaire device which is essentially shaped like a stent but is tapered on the end and we deploy that solitaire device to capture that clot and then pull it back into our guide catheter. And in this situation, that, that proved to be life-saving for Julie because it restored blood flow to the entire right half of her brain. As soon as the patient completes their acute stroke workup and care, they'll be transported and escorted by our team immediately to the neuro ICU. And the goal of the neuro ICU care is to optimize the medical care for neurologic recovery after a stroke. Because of where Julie's stroke was on the right side of her brain, she had a phenomenon known as anosognosia, which means that she couldn't recognize the deficits that she had. Her brain wasn't recognizing that she couldn't move the left side of her body as well, and that she wasn't having as much feeling on the left side of her body as normal. We also try to take the time to get to know the patient and the family. Um, to make them feel more comfortable with us. I mean, this is usually one of the worst things that has ever happened to them. And their stress levels are already through the roof and we're trying to control their blood pressure and try to control their anxiety. And the best way you can do that is by making them feel comfortable and confident in you. When they leave the hospital, that's the beginning of their hard work. They will continue to receive stroke rehab through our Comprehensive Stroke Center, as well as uh, stroke support group resources. Did you have a cookie, babe? I'm delighted to say that Julie is uh, back home. She's with her four children. I've had the opportunity to visit with her several times. She's a, a young, healthy woman with her whole life ahead of her, and she obviously can be there for, for the people who care about her the most. And so one of the reasons here at UCSD, we've been very excited about the Comprehensive 
Comprehensive Stroke Center program is because it really highlights the fact that it takes an entire team of people to put myself as a surgeon in a position to open that artery in time for Julie to prevent and interrupt that process where a large part of her brain would otherwise die from a lack of blood flow. There's no question that you can have all of the devices and all the tools and all the medications, uh, but if you don't have the opportunity to treat that patient in that key window, uh, you're not going to have uh, the good outcome that Julie did. And that's why I think it, it, it's so important with the Comprehensive Stroke Center program that that emphasis is really there because I think that is what's going to lead for us to have more and more Julies uh, in, in people who otherwise um, would, would be devastated and disabled. Together, we can end stroke. 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 Together, we can end stroke.